Hi, Jody here from Healing Journey, uh, broadcasting live on Facebook today. Um, it's been a really long time since I have been live. Um, so let me explain why. So I think uh, most of you know that um, I am launching um, Gut Instinct Health Program, so I've been working really hard on that. Um, so stay tuned for notices for that um, this fall. I also have a new guide that I'm launching, Eight Ways to Not uh, Poop Your Pants in Public. Um, and so I'm really excited about that as well. So there's been lots going on on the back end, um, but you're going to see a lot more of me live on Facebook, especially over um, the fall. We're going to be talking about lots of cool stuff, um, particularly related to gut health, um, but I also have some great information about hormone health, about hair and mineral analysis, um, about heavy metals, and I'm getting really, really big on mold as well. Um, so lots to talk about this fall. Um, so I'm going to start to do these Facebook Lives pretty regularly. Um, so aiming for Tuesday at 4.30, and I know it's not 4.30 right now, um, today. Um, it's the summer still. I want to get outside um, before thunderstorms, but um, typically, and I do have uh, something going on at 4.30 today, but typically I will be doing um, Tuesdays at 4.30, so feel free to join me then. Um, and the last Tuesday of every month, beginning in September, I'm going to be answering any questions you have live on the coaching call, which gives you an awesome chance to kind of check in um, with me uh, with any health questions that you have and throw them at me. So today I wanted to talk about a few things. Um, so I wanted to talk about leaky gut um, because that is definitely something that is uh, talked about today. Um, quite frequently, it's becoming more and more common, and I think there's still a bit of an understand misunderstanding. And the first thing I want to clarify is that leaky gut is not a root cause. So oftentimes people go, oh, I have leaky gut. That's what's causing my gut issues. I figured it out. That's enough. Um, so no, <laughs> you may have leaky gut, but then the question that I always have is, why do you have leaky gut? So what's causing your gut to be leaky? Um, and chances are it's going to narrow right back down to you and your lifestyle. You and your lifestyle has probably created a really ripe environment um, for lots of toxins, um, lots of bacterial or parasitic infections, um, maybe bad eating habits, and all of these things contribute to leaky gut, um, which um, outside of um, you know killing off the parasites are all things within your control. Um, so at the end of the day, you're kind of taking charge of leaky gut. But before we kind of get into... Um, the reasons why you have leaky gut, let's talk a little bit about what it is. Um, so leaky gut is when, so basically your intestinal wall is uh, a cell thick in your gut, right? So we have a cell lining thick and we want those cells to stay together, okay? Um, what happens when you have leaky gut is for various reasons, the cell lining, the little tight junctions that kind of magnetize them together, break apart, and then food particles get into your system, and it causes a whole host of problems. Um, the big one that it causes is autoimmune disease. So um, food particles get in, and then your body gets confused, and it goes, what is this half protein particle doing in here, or what is this food chunk doing in here? It doesn't belong in here because obviously it's supposed to stay inside your gut. And so your immune system can start to freak out and it can cause all of these symptoms. Um, it can cause skin issues, autoimmune disease, brain fog, depression, anxiety. So a lot of the symptoms we're seeing with chronic illness today are actually symptoms associated with leaky gut. And this is why, um, you know, irregardless of your symptom, I always say to people, let's go back to the gut and figure out what's going on there. So what causes these tight junctions to come apart? Um, so one thing for sure is gluten. Um, so when we're eating gluten, it contains a molecule called, it activates a molecule called zonulin, which then will um, pull apart the intestinal wall and it'll cause food, food to go through. Um, so gluten is a big no-no when you're trying to heal your gut. Um, and that's a whole other talk I'll go into at some point um, another day. So that causes leaky gut. Um, toxins cause leaky gut. And I get this a lot where people are like, hey, Jody, you know, I don't have um, heavy metal toxins because I don't work in a factory. So you don't need to work in a factory or handle jewelry 
or, you know, do anything kind of industrial to have heavy metal exposure. Um, we have heavy metal exposure when we breathe in air. And that's because um, when they took the lead out of gas and made it unleaded gas, they actually put in another metal called thallium. And so now thallium's in our gas. And so when we breathe in air, we're breathing in thallium. So right away, that's a great example of how you're getting a metal exposure. If you eat fish, you're going to get metal exposure. I see um, in people who eat, you know, a lot of top feeders like um, tuna, even salmon, um, they have high mercury content show up in their hair analysis. Um, so there's definite metal exposure. There's toxins everywhere, toxins in your makeup, toxins in non-organic food, um, toxins in air fresheners. There's toxins everywhere you go now. And so everyone is toxic. Um, and so that's a huge contributor to leaky gut. And let's be honest, if you're eating shitty food, um, that's going to be contributing to your shitty problems. Um, and so what's happening is it's, the, the gut lining has these little microvilli and it's um, really impacting the microvilli's function. So the microvilli, I like to think of it like coral. You know, if you've ever gone diving or snorkeling, you can see this beautiful coral and it's got lots of little layers and the fish can hide in them. And so that's kind of like the coral of our stomach and that's where we do all the absorption of nutrients. So I want you to imagine bleached coral. Um, you know, when toxins get exposed, um, sorry, when coral gets exposed to these toxins, um, it really impacts their ability to function. They're kind of gross and they don't absorb um, nutrients from the water anymore. And that's what happens to our gut. Um, and then it becomes leaky and disgusting. So when you're having gut issues, the inside of your gut likely looks very similar to bleached coral. And if you can imagine, if you have a bleach coral inside, you're going to be very, very inviting to parasites. And this is where a whole conversation about parasites come in. And I'm a huge fan of talking about parasites um, because this is a big contributor to leaky gut as well. Um, so basically, as you can see, and I obviously didn't go into all of them, but there's a lot of different reasons why you might have leaky gut. Um, and why you might have these health issues. So it's really important to be treating the, um, the root causes. So you want to treat the root causes of the leaky gut. You want to treat the parasites. You want to reduce toxin exposure. You want to address stress in your life. And you want to look at your diet in order to really get to the bottom of healing your gut. Um, so that's a little bit more about leaky gut and um, why it's important to do a deeper dive. And so today for our deeper dive, I wanted to talk a little bit about ropeworm. Um, so ropeworm is a fascinating topic that um, not a lot of people know a lot about. Um, and uh, it's something that's not necessarily recognized by the medical community because it's not actually a real nematode. So nematodes like... They're going to be circular all the way around. They're very uniform in shape, and they're the live, reproducing, egg-laying worms that can also exist in our bodies. So ropeworm is something different. Um, nobody knows exactly what it is. Is it, you know, some random colony of bacteria that's moving through your stomach? Is it just mucus that's being produced by the body as a result of all the toxic exposure that's really impacting the body's ability to, um, you know, absorb nutrients at the gut level? Um, is it because we have so many, um, you know, chemicals and heavy metals and it's forming this gross mucus colony in our stomachs? Um, is it alive? Is it, is it, is it outside of humans? Is it part of our DNA? Um, nobody really knows. But here's what we do know. When you remove ropeworm, when you're starting to pull away at that biofilm, that disgusting layer of filth in the body, kind of like swamp-esque, people start to feel better. So I've had clients who have come to me um, who've had issues for 20 years. Um, and they've tried everything under the sun and then they take um, a product that I use um, and I'm going to show it to you actually. It's Para One. Um, this is a product I use for ropeworm. And when they use this product, um, it really uh, will start to address biofilm and it'll pull out ropeworm. So if you want to know what ropeworm looks like, um, you can head over to Google and, and you can actually see what it looks like. Um, I'm not going to show you on here in case you don't want to look at it. Um, but that's what ropeworm looks like. 
Okay, so the product that I use, it's been a game changer. So when I used it, when I first started, I could have about eight foods. Um, I'd done multiple, multiple um, parasitic cleanses, um, and it wasn't really, I was getting worse actually. Um, and so when I did uh, this rope worm protocol, it started to pull all that goop that was stuck um, at the lining of my intestines. And so what happens with biofilm is that it's much more um, thicker, um, resistant to antibiotics. So you take herbs, you take medications, and it can't get through this biofilm. And so gut bugs and bacteria kind of hide on the other side. And so once the antibiotics are done or you're, you know, you're done your protocol for your herbs, then you still have um, that biofilm that's there and then those gut bugs come back out again. And so it becomes this vicious cycle. And if you've done any sort of a herbal protocol, then you know um, that you know staying on the herbal protocols aren't very fun and nobody really wants to live like that. So this is a way to get deeper. It's a, it's a much deeper cleanse. So I'm gonna take a pill and I'm gonna show you what happens when you put it in water. I can open it. So, sorry, you can't see. I'm just putting it in my green color jar. Um, and then I'm going to mi mix it around. And it, it forms a glue-like substance. This is kind of a, it's very gooey. So when you take this substance, um, and I'll just show you with my pen here, it becomes like a slime. Okay? And this, it's a, it's, it's a really gross slime. But basically what happens is, because it's so gooey, it's going to stick to, I want to try and pick it up one more time for you. You can see there. It's going to stick to your intestinal wall, and it's going to start pulling that stuff off. Um, and so for some people, you know, uh, there's a case of um, someone who's had IBS for like something like 50 years, and they took this product and it went away. Um, people have been able to reintroduce foods, but when you initially do it, it's like a blah feeling because you feel like something gross is being released in your stomach. And then it, you can imagine it's kind of like tipping over an ant colony and all, all of the ants go everywhere. That's kind of what happens when you take this product. Um, but this is one of my favorite products for like velcroing out that gross biofilm that's staying in your body that's keeping you sick. Um, so it's one of the major things that I use with a lot of my clients and it's what I call a game changer in the field. Um, so that was a little bit about leaky gut. Um, it was a little bit about um, para one and rope worm. Um, and now I want to talk a little bit about um, some sleep strategies. Um, so one of the sleep strategies that I've started to use is this really cool earthing mat. So this is a sleep earthing mat. Um, so let's talk about earthing before we dive into earthing mats. So I don't know if you've he heard of earthing or grounding, um, but essentially what it is, is it's putting your feet on the ground um, without shoes, without that rubber in between. And what it's doing is it's allowing you to get that electric charge um, from the earth, um, which sounds very woohoo, um, but it's not woohoo at all. It's actually a great way to support your health. Um, and what's happened since the invention of rubber soles is we've actually prevented our body's ability to ground. And there's an amazing charge in the earth that kind of neutralizes our body. Um, and it really, really helps with healing. Um, so the recommendation is to do 10 minutes a day. Basically, the electrons um, from the earth pass through the collagen in our skin, um, so like the matrix of our skin, and they act as antioxidants, and they're going to actually neutralize free radicals. Um, so one study um, has been showing that grounding uh, decreases pain levels. Um, and that there's fewer circulating neutrophils and lymphocytes. Um, they've also shown with grounding, um, for example, someone had this crazy sore with diabetes on their ankle, and um, they couldn't heal it. They'd had it for years, and then they got a grounding mat, and uh, it healed in like a couple of weeks, which is crazy to think this person had been dealing with it for years, and all they had to do was go walk on the earth for 10 minutes a day. Um, but so, so grounding can be hard if you don't live near a beach, if you live in a city and it's disgusting, um, you have to make it to a park every day. And so a hack is actually to buy a grounding mat. So I actually sleep on this mat. It's made out of silver threads, um, which is why I really like it. Um, I got this one from the States, um, but you can um, purchase them, um, er, uh, earthing mats as well. 
um, online in Canada too. And you can get some that you can sleep on. Um, and then you can get some also uh, that you can stand on while you're working and things like that. Um, and so if you go online, actually, the they've got amazing reviews, um, just amazing reviews in terms of the improvement in your ability to sleep. Um, so it's a great hack if you can't go outside, um, if you're, you know, having problems accessing grounding from a more natural standpoint. And it also allows you to, um, you know, do it while you're sleeping at night, which is lots more grounding than 10 minutes, right? So earthing.com is where you can get them. Um, a super cool hack for sleep. Um, so uh, that's it for today. Um, tune in uh, later this week. I'm going to be doing another one uh, to talk a little bit more about um, some other really cool topics. Thanks for joining me.